In this video, we will start looking at decision-making constructs in Swift. We'll start with the common if statement and see how Swift 2.0 implements it. Again, I've got a playground open in Xcode 7, and in addition to the foundation import, I've placed three constants. A positive number, a negative number, and a constant for zero. The first if statement will be the most basic form. Two things to pay attention here regarding syntax. The most obvious deviation is the lack of parentheses around the condition itself. The other is more subtle. In other C style languages, many times if you have a code block that is just one statement, as we have here, the language relaxes syntax rules and allows you to omit the curly braces. It would be logical to assume that Swift is no exception. So if we remove the curly braces from the if statement, we'll see that it causes an error. Now if we look at Xcode's commentary, it simply says that it expects an opening curly brace after the condition. And since what is open must be closed, we have to include the closing curly brace as well. Now this is also our first encounter with the print function. Now its task in the playground for this series is very basic. Display some text, pass to it as a string and also notice that it appends the new line character to the input. To provide an alternative outcome if the condition is false, use an else statement. To test this, I'll replace positive number with negative number. and we'll now see that negative 10 is negative. Again, the curly braces are still required, even for a single statement. For more than two possibilities, add an else if clause. And now to test this, I'll simply replace negative number with zero. And we'll see that we get the expected result. And that's all there is to the if statement. It's pretty simple. The if statement is actually repurposed in Swift for another scenario, but we'll look at it later. Right now, let's focus on the other construct for making decisions in Swift which is the switch statement. Now the if statement tests a conditional to see if it is true and the switch statement looks for patterns in a value and executes statements if a match is found. So I've got some code here that I'm going to copy and paste in. I've added three constants here to represent colors. The switch statement will test for pattern matches on one of them, black value in this case. Then there are multiple cases, each of which represents a pattern to match. Each case has one or more statements to execute if its case statement's pattern is matched. For example, in this case, no pun intended, it will skip over red because red and black do not match. Then it will execute the statements for the black case because black and black match and print out the string grayscale color as we see here in the playground. Then it will exit the switch statement and it will ignore the purple case and also the default case. Now the default case is matched only if no other case is matched so it is the catch-all situation. Now it has to be the last 
statement in, or it has to be the last case in the switch statement. You don't always need, however, to have a default case. What you could have is, let's look at this situation. In this case, we have a variable, or, or a constant rather, is true, which is set to true. So that means it's a Boolean value, and therefore there's only two possible, there's only two possible possibilities here, true or false. So if I create a switch statement and the case statements without a default exhaust all the possibilities for the value that we're trying to match, then I don't have to have a default. So in, so in this case, I have cases for true and false, which are the only two values that is true can have. So if I come up here and I remove de the default case, I'm going to get an error. And that error is going to say that the switch must be exhaustive and consider adding a default case. So I'll put that back in. Also down here, so I could replace this last case here with a default and still have the same outcome. The cases can also match on more than one pattern. So let's take a look. This way we can match all the primary colors in a single case. And we can also match all the grayscale colors in a single case. Note that if you wish to have multiple matches for a single case, this is the only way to do it in Swift. You can't have multiple case statements for one block because that would mean that, the, that some of the case statements would be empty and Swift doesn't allow that. Now if you've used another language with a switch statement, you might be wondering why it behaves properly with the examples that we've looked at. In other C style languages, at the end of each case, you have to explicitly add a break statement at the end of the case indicating such. In Swift, no such statement is necessary, although you are not prevented from adding one. Break is a legal keyword in Swift. However, what Swift does is prevents implicit fall through, which is the default in other C style languages. However, if you want to explicitly permit fall through, you can simply add the fall through keyword to the end of a case. And if I replace black value with purple value here in the pattern to match, we'll see that it matches this case here for purple, yellow, and orange, prints other color, but it falls through to the default case, which catches everything, which prints out, is this a color? So in here, we matched two cases, actually. One other thing to note is that it doesn't make sense to fall through the default or the last case, whichever one you happen to have, because there's nothing to fall through to and Swift will complain.